When most people think of UFOs, they probably think of alien spaceships from some distant planet. However, hollow earth believers believe UFOs come not from outer space, but inside our earth. Did the Nazis also believe this, and could this explain their obsession with the occult and Antarctica? Is the hollow earth theory the greatest government cover-up of all time? And is the government still trying to use it to their advantage? But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, as always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons. Without you, this channel would not be possible. Because of you, we are able to afford new lights and filming equipment. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on part five of our Hollow Earth series, we are going to be talking about Base 211. On Monday's episode, we spoke about the Third Reich's famed medium, Maria Orsic. Maria Orsic's disappearance in 1945 led many to believe she ended up inside the earth in the land of Agartha. And of course, when we first went on this journey of exploring the idea of a hollow earth, we spoke about Admiral Byrd. Admiral Byrd had experience with Agartha, with the inhabitants of Agartha. His diary was published by his son after his death. Because during his life, he was forced into secrecy by the United States government. From the looks of it, out of all the research I've done, this does look like one of the biggest cover-ups of all time. Governmental cover-ups. And not just one government but all governments. From my research, I do believe that this cover-up has a lot to do with what we're seeing right now in our world today. This cover-up could be part of the epic battle, the battle between good versus evil, between God and Satan, the end times, the shifting of timelines, the moving into a more positive future once we get rid of the dark entities that want to establish a new world order. In doing a deep dive into Agartha, I decided to do the Nazi video last. Yes, we started with Marie Orsic on Monday, but this seems to be the crux of everything going on in our world. Now, there are people out there that have dedicated way more time than I have to this subject, people who have written books on this subject, so as with all of the videos on this channel, I do hope that after you're done watching this, you will do your own research and come up with your own conclusions. I have listed down in the description box below a few videos and articles that might help you get started. Now I'm not sure where Maria Orsic lands on the board, whether she was used by the Third Reich for her abilities or whether she willingly gave her abilities to the Third Reich. But I'm pretty sure that people like Admiral Byrd are good guys, but were put in a very impossible situation. I'm pretty sure that by his son releasing his journals, that he was trying to tell us what his father wanted to tell us all those years ago. So without further ado, let's look at Hitler's involvement in Antarctica and Agartha. According to the history books, World War II ended on September 2nd, 1945, with the Axis forces surrendering to the Allied forces. Soon after the end of World War II, we had what was called the Nuremberg Trials. The Nuremberg Trials were a set of trials on an international level that charged people with war crimes and crimes against humanity for their involvement in the Nazi party. We saw for 12 of the defendants what is called an international military tribunal. All in all, there were 199 defendants and 161 convictions and 37 sentenced to death. 
However, for a long time, what people fail to realize is that most of the really powerful people within the Third Reich were not tried at the Nuremberg trials. Many of these leaders, scientists, and doctors were said to have committed suicide or perhaps ran off. At least that was the story that the people were told globally. Now we understand that there was an operation in place, an operation called Operation Paperclip. Operation Paperclip, for the most part, gave some of these scientists new identities, moved them into the United States or to other countries under a new identity, completely cutting them off from any involvement in the Third Reich. However, part of Operation Paperclip was also classifying many of the technologies used by the Nazi party, including that of genetic research. And of course, flying saucers. During World War II, there were many rumors and theories that the Germans had created a base in Antarctica. This was a base called New Swabenland or Base 211. It was rumored that this base was a station for a lot of the elites to be able to go into the world beneath Antarctica, aka Agartha, and live. Or perhaps hide to hide is probably a better way to describe this alleged base. Now in 1947, Admiral Byrd was sent back down to Antarctica in an operation called Operation High Jump. On paper, Operation High Jump was supposed to be a training routine. However, many speculate that that's not the case because Admiral Byrd was sent with a huge fleet with him. Many speculate that Admiral Byrd was sent to Antarctica to try to find the opening to Base 211 in New Swabenland. Allegedly, this base was in a mountainous region of Antarctica that wasn't particularly snowy. The legend goes that once Admiral Byrd got to Antarctica, a battle persisted. A battle that also involved many flying saucers that had been used and developed by the Third Reich. Things get a little hazy after Admiral Byrd returned to the United States. But one thing many researchers are pretty sure of is that a deal was made between the government and the inhabitants of Antarctica. Now there is rumor that Admiral Byrd talked about seeing blue-skinned people there, perhaps extraterrestrials, along with a lot of the Nazis that had been hidden in this base. It's no secret that the history books are written by the victors, or maybe not the victors, but the people who rule our planet. We know that Hitler was going for world domination. He wanted this one world government. And some say he wanted to bring about the Antichrist. We know that for the ruling elite, their greatest trick is infiltration. Many people believe that World War II did not end the way that they told us it ended and that the Nuremberg trials were nothing but show trials, basically using some middle ranking people as scapegoats. Certain deaths were faked. And of course, with Operation Paperclip, many of the most dangerous scientists in the Third Reich were given whole new identities and freedom in other countries. Many researchers believe that what we're seeing now is the fruition of Hitler's plans. Again, a new world order. Now, because of the sensitivity of this topic and because of censorship on this platform, there's not a whole, whole lot I can really say beyond that. Again, I do recommend that everybody do his or her own research. This part five is more of a conclusion video to everything that we've spoken about in hopes that everybody will go out there and educate his or herself and come up with his or her own independent thought on the matter. Critical thinking is a skill that is not really used a lot nowadays because we know that the propaganda unit of World War II is still in full effect. And in my opinion, World War II never really ended. In my opinion, World War II just shifted. To conclude these ideas regarding Antarctica, Agartha, and the Third Reich, I do want to tell you guys about a German submarine that went missing in 1943. However, in 1947, loved ones and the government received a letter from the submarine U-boat 
209. The writer of the letter seems to believe that he and his fellow men upon the submarine got trapped. Trapped in a hollow earth. They too, like Admiral Byrd, had fallen into the poles, into the land of Agartha. But in this letter, they knew that it would get to the appropriate people. We also know that in 1966, a cartographer for National Geographic drew a map of Antarctica without the ice shields. In this map, he showed the tunnels leading to the hollow earth. Upon my research, I also found directions on how to get to the hollow earth. I will leave the directions in this video. However, I will not read them out loud because of Big Brother watching us. If you would like to read the directions to yourself, please pause the video so you can see them. There is a famous saying that says, the more I learn, the less I know. And I can definitely tell you from my perspective during this great awakening, that is certainly true. Do aliens come from inside of our earth, not outside of our earth? Is this where spaceships come from? The hollow earth, Agartha? If you're to read Admiral Byrd's diaries and believe him to be correct, then yes. And it was Mark Twain who said that the truth is often stranger than fiction. A few episodes ago, Tom Numbers from the Psych Club and I did an episode with our friend Tarot by Janine, Janine who's up in Canada. Tom asked her to ask the cards flat out, do we live on a flat earth? The cards really wouldn't answer it for us. Basically, like the earth isn't flat, but also isn't round either. That's led me to then question, what actually are we standing on? Are there people living inside of our earth? I don't know. But what I do know is there is something very dangerous that they are hiding from us. And during this time, on our timeline, the veil is being lifted. With Janine's cards, we also got the impression that it wasn't time for us to learn the truth yet. Sometimes learning the truth can be like opening up Pandora's box. When our minds have been programmed, yes, programmed, indoctrinated, to think a certain way, and the minute that indoctrination starts to shatter, it can cause trauma. And even though the bad guys think that they'll win, we know that in the end, God wins, good wins. And we move into the age of Aquarius, the thousand years of peace. So regardless of the truth, we all have to hold on to each other tight and accept what we can when we can. And know that in the end, as number 45 said, the best is yet to come. Now again, please remember that on this channel, everything we speak about is all alleged. I again, really, really, really want you to do your own research. Once more, I have provided links in the description box below to help you get started down that rabbit hole. But I would also like to hear your opinions down in the comment section below. We're going to leave the hollow earth behind for now as we move on to new topics. Monday's mystery was inspired by the hollow earth but isn't really about the hollow earth. And it'll be more of a fun one. A conspiracy or a mystery that I was already familiar with. I hope that you guys are all having a wonderful week ahead and I hope that your weekend is going to be good. I know things are crazy with the gas right now. Please be safe. Be courteous of other people. Please remember the only actions that you can control are your own. So especially in stressful situations, always try to be the kind one, to be the light in a dark world. Once more, I want to thank Josh McKay for doing our opening music. If you would like to purchase the full song from Josh, there is a link down in the description box below. And I would like to again thank Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys today. Todd's band, The Flying Mystics, will be on the Dark Outpost soon for a concert. But if you want to follow his band on YouTube and get access to some of their music, then their link is also in the description box below. Once more, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will talk to all of you soon. Bye.